This is John. John is a rose grower and a member of the cooperative. His cooperative has grown and changed over the years, which is why its organisational structure is sometimes difficult to understand. Let's go back to the beginning. How and why was the cooperative first set up? John harvests large quantities of roses every year. There is no good sales structure in place, so John sells his own products. This is not ideal, because it takes him a lot of time, and he does not get a good price. John feels that this can surely be done differently. What if I join forces with other growers and we sell our products together? By doing so, we will not only create a joint sales structure, we will also join forces financially and strengthen our sales position. Other growers embrace John's idea and the cooperative is born. As such, the cooperative consists of the associated growers and their joint company. It has the following tasks. The daily management of the association and the company, control over important decisions, and internal supervision. All tasks are discussed jointly by the members of the general members meeting. But it is impractical to control the company via such a large group. The members therefore choose a small group of members to take on the daily management and another small group of members to supervise them as a supervisory council. Over time, the daily management of the business became a full-time job requiring a lot of knowledge and skills. The elected board of members retained statutory responsibility, but appointed a full-time management board consisting of non-growers. The supervisory council was expanded to include external board members who were not growers, and subsequently, it became the supervisory board. In order to increase member involvement, advisory councils and FPCs were introduced a few years later. If we zoom out, we see that the structure of the cooperative rests on five key pillars. The association consisting of members who can exert influence and control over the company by way of the general members meeting. The company, which is led by the cooperative board. The cooperative board, which is monitored by the supervisory board. And the advisory councils and FPCs, which inform the association and advise the management board. In the next phase, the board of members united with the supervisory board and it was decided to leave the statutory responsibility of the management to the management board. And that's the structure of Rose Grower John's cooperative. <laughs>